Christmas episode in the books. Christmas episode in the books. Christmas episode in the books. Oh yeah, now Christmas episode in the books. It's in the books, y'all. In the books. I mean, in the books. You can open the books and you'll see the books. The Christmas episode in the books. And I don't know what else to say. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Hey everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Megan. And I am Selena. And this is One Hand Two Ducks. One Hand Two Ducks. The Christmas episode. Yes, because Christmas is right around the corner. Right around the corner. Greeting gods of all and sin. Uh, I'm gonna miss Christmas songs. I, you know what? I am too. I haven't, I, I started listening to them early. So I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to get sick of these. And now I'm like, I don't want them to go. And that's what happens to me every year. I listen to them too early. Then I get sick of them. And then right when they go away, because I don't know if you listen to the station I listen to, which is probably the same one, but the one that plays Christmas music the entire time, but they end it right on the 26th. And I'm just like, I know. Uh, they end it at plug like 11.58. Like, right? <laughs> I'm like, gosh, I mean, granted, imagine being in that studio. I mean, we hear the same Christmas. I mean, there's not that many Christmas songs. That's so true. like hearing the same ones over and over for a month, I, I'm sure that's why they're like, it's the 26th. Get rid of it. So my <laughs> mom stuff. has like the music channels on her TV. And um, I, cause like we don't like, I don't know, unless we're in the car, we kind of listen to radio and there's Christmas songs on the radio, but I don't uh -huh. know if they've been playing this song at all, but it is Glow by Brett Eldridge. You need to sing it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would, I would, except for I don't really know it. It's just every time it comes on, I'm like, this Can is you so do the cute. tune? Um, or no. maybe like a piece of it? No. Fine, I guess we'll have to He look just it goes up. like, I love, because kind of, he's kind of jazzy sounding. So I guess he's he's a country music star turned uh -huh. kind of jazz artist. And he kind of sounds like Frank Sinatra. Okay. So then he like sings a song. He's like, I love to watch you glow. Right. And it's like very, sounds like he's drinking a, a very festive cocktail in a very <laughs> kind of smoky lounge with a suit uh -huh. on singing the song. And it's very cute. And I think that might be my top. Christmas song okay. this year. I usually have like a favorite. Do you have a favorite every year? I do have a favorite. I my favorite is it's the most wonderful time of the year because for me that song just encapsulates like all the things that I love about Christmas. And every day time in plays, day out, like every year, that's the song. That's that's the song every year because okay. it just it just it just for me it just tells me all the things that I love. It reminds me why I love Christmas. I'm like, yes, it is. There'll be marshmallows and did it and did it and and they just like list it. Um it would be that one or Nat King Cole's Oh Chestnuts. nice. I love his I love that one that he yeah, sings. It's like <clears throat> he's got such a smooth voice. It's so he does. beautiful. Yeah. I also really love um Baby Please Come Home. I forget mm -hmm. who sings it. The Ronettes maybe I only know the Mariah Carey the version. The snow's coming down. I, yeah, I only know the, I only know the Mariah Carey fall. version. Oh, well, it started with, like, I think the Ronettes. Okay. It's probably not. It's probably like the, the, the Marvelettes or, or something like that. I'm probably getting it wrong. Ah, but. the Motown peeps. Motown. And I think, who, the, who sings Frosty the Snowman, but they've got a thick, like, Brooklyn accent. Like, I don't know. Frosty the don't. Snowman. I don't trust me with people because forever I swore that whoever sang Grinch was this was um I thought it was uh oh my gosh I'm blanking on his name I see his face though Mufasa James Earl Jones every Wait, time like, and I the, thought James Earl the, Jones sang that song dude forever and then my mom was like it's not James Earl Jones <laughs> I'm like it sounds like him I don't know if he can <laughs> sing. I don't know, but, but if you listen, if you listen to, you're a mean one, just how he, especially when he's like, you're, um, 
He's like, I will help you with a tofu sandwich. Which is how he like pronunciates words is is what I hear from James Earl Jones's mouth. So it just I don't know. Maybe they went to the same theater class. I don't know, but they sound very similar to me. I can hear James Earl Jones reading "You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch" as like a, a dramatic poem. <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. He did I ever tell that. you? He needs to do that next year. Did I ever tell you when I was in middle school? This was when um, Jim Carrey's The Grinch came out. Mm-hmm. And before it came out, it was like me and my friend VJ got very. You remember VJ? VJ. VJ. Him and I got so like obsessed with The Grinch right before it came out. Like we went and saw it together and like super excited. Uh huh. But, um, we decided in front of our theater class to get up and sing You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch before everyone went on Christmas break. And we had to, we like, we did the whole song. Like we had the whole, like, it's a long song. Yeah. And we were like, we're going to do it. Acapella. <laughs> oh yeah. Dramatically. It was so great. <laughs> I would have loved to see you and VJ do something like that, especially because VJ was so amazingly like dramatic. And what he did, he was always like, he just got into character. He owned it. It's true. And so, yes, I would have loved to see that. He And he owned that song, too. Yeah, I bet he did. It was fantastic. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Megan? Um, we're talking about Christmas traditions. Oh, wacky. Oh, sweet. wacky, sweet. And awesome. And awesome. Our own, other people's, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Christmas traditions. Yeah. I'm wearing Christmas pajamas You're wearing Christmas something. I am wearing Christmas pajamas. I must explain. I must explain. Can I explain what happened? Please. Please explain. Okay. So we already planned this episode and we're so excited. I I don't have Christmas pajamas though, right? So, you know... I, I just don't. I ha- I only wear t-shirts and, and just raggedy clothes, my poor husband. But so I don't have cute pajamas ever. So Megan, sweet Megan, found it deep in her heart <laughs> to send me Christmas pajamas. Alas, they did not arrive. Alas, so, old Navy. Jeez. So <laughs> I literally went into my eight-year-old's closet because I give the kids Christmas pajamas every single year. And so um, I rated it. And even though the ones I gave her last year, uh, they are too tight. But this one was actually one that I gave her when she was six. About to turn seven. And you're wearing it as and a this grown one fits. woman? I can't. I mean, I had to roll up the sleeves because they do kind of end. Like, right. Oh, my God. That's there, amazing. But- but still, I'm, I'm, and then I raided there and I found these, these cute, uh, head, this head, uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Hat? Hat? No, but that's not what I was, what is it? It's not, is it, what is, what is it? Yeah, it's a Christmas Bean? hat. Uh, yeah, 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 there it is. And, and it has, and it has little elf ears sticking out. So I had to have that too. I don't know if it's that your children are larger than normal or you're just a wee lady, but no. the fact that you're able to fit into a six-year-old. My daughter is pretty, pretty tall. She's going to way surpass me. She's all, like I said, she's only, she's about to turn nine, but she is at least up to my chin by now. And I'm oh like, whatever, goodness. whatever. I just said whatever to her. I don't care. <laughs> so pass me. Whatever. My, my second one's going to be like me. So we'll be shorties. I remember when I passed mom, I was very excited. <laughs> I bet you were. I don't know why. I don't know why that's like a, like a rite of passage. Because like you feel taller like you're, than your mother. Yeah. You feel like you're like, I own grown. you. Like I'm but grown you, now. I'm, I'm grown. Than you. I'm 12 and I'm grown. <laughs> Please. I would sit her butt down in a heartbeat. You ain't grown yet. Not today. So let's, <laughs> let's talk about, um, traditions traditions let's talk about some of from our childhood not yeah. going into like current traditions yet unless they've carried over but what were some christmas traditions that you had growing up um okay so my favorite one and i carry out some of it now um my mom and my aunts used to tell this story all the time with my grandpa and uh they would tell the story because my grandpa was really 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 into christmas my grandma was the exact opposite opposite she didn't care She was just like, whatever. But my grandpa always went crazy all out. He was the dude hanging off the roof because he was putting lights where they're not supposed to be lights. And he did it anyway. He didn't care. And um, anyway, so when they were growing up, 
he used to do this thing where um christmas eve night when they were all in bed he would take all this candy and glitter and this was like back in the 40s well not 40s oops sorry mom <laughs> you're not that old but this was like in the you know 60s and and early maybe late 50s and he would he would get candy and all this like confetti and stuff and then like take it all throughout the stairs and all on the floor and then um he would uh ring this bell right before christmas morning right when it, it was christmas morning and right when everybody was supposed to wake up he'd ring this bell and it would uh, wake everybody up and they'd rush down the stairs and he'd stand he'd be standing outside going bye bye santa oh you missed him Oh. Yeah, and he would do this every year and they would get annoyed because they're like how do we keep missing him every year and he was just like oh he just was here look he left all this candy he's so and so um but when i was growing up um he used to do that but it was not to that extent you know he's older he's like i ain't doing all that but he still did have the bell every oh. morning he'd go throughout the house every christmas morning he'd go out throughout the house and ding, 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 and we knew Right when we heard that book, we're like, it's Christmas! <laughs> and, we were out. Um, and so what I kept was that bell um, from Christmas. And I still do it with my kids every single year. Um, it's just something that um, I choose to honor him by. Mm -hmm. We also choose to do Elf on the Shelf. And um, I named one um, after him. It was supposed to be a boy, but it came a, a girl just like life and so i his name was george but um it was a girl so i named her georgina and Cute. so georgina is that's one of where our... georgina's from yes nice shout out to i've Gramps. seen her on facebook she she has she has her moments yeah she debuts and uh <laughs> the kids have so much and that was nothing i never had that growing up my grandparents you know no one had that but that was something i saw from other families that i they i just saw the joy in their faces and and their excitement every every you know year and i was like you know what if we can if i can make this even more magical why not why not Cute. so i added that one and i added one more which was um i kind of took what my grandpa did but then i added my own little spin to it so instead of santa leaving like candy and confetti he just leaves a lot of mess so like i i <laughs> i take flour and i first make i i put flour around my feet to make footsteps and i and i walk i take one step every time make flour around it so he makes footsteps to the tree then all the gifts that he he gives i also sprinkle sprinkle a little flour mixed with glitter on top of that too and then um and then uh and then of course i take bites of the cookies and i drink the juice or whatever drink the milk and then he leaves and then it's so cute because in the morning you know the first thing they see is like he was here because all his footsteps <laughs> and i was like yeah he always leaves such a mess okay okay what what did he do let's see what? did he really come really yeah look oh, oh. And his footprints left to the door. Wow. So he did come. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's so get, cute and ambitious. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I go all out. But the only thing I don't do is I don't wrap Santa's gifts because I am lazy. So anything that's too big or that, that I don't feel like wrapping, he just leaves. Like, it's for me. I mean, that's what he does in all the movies. He just kind of throws the toys out there, doesn't he? <laughs> there. There it is. Or just stuffs yes. them in the stocking exactly so what about you what is your christmas traditions um well let's see so growing up i my um so my dad was married before he met my mom and he had three mm -hmm. girls and i always heard the stories about how he would he would like get up on the roof and clomp around and like shake bells especially when they wouldn't yes. go to bed <laughs> because he like their mom would be like santa's here santa's gonna leave He's not going to come in unless you're in bed, right? So he would do that. And I don't think he never did anything like that with me because I don't know, Vegas roofs are weird. It's not going to sound the same. <laughs> you know Probably I mean? not. And that would be, and you know, Vegas houses are really close together. So he'd be, people would yeah, be like, the what neighbors the would be like, what is that man doing? 911, um, what's your emergency? But like, we would, <laughs> my mom raised me Catholic, so we'd go to midnight mass. Mm -hmm. um, um, <laughs> we would open, we would open one present on Christmas Eve before midnight mass mm -hmm. and then we would go to midnight mass and of course like i come back and i'm like i just want to open presents now. <laughs> and mom would be like no you have to and like that was the one night a year where it's like it's the most insane 
like the, the, the air is heavy with incense at church. Yes. So you just want to go to sleep. Yeah. But it's fun. Like it's pretty. But <laughs> right. then you're like, I'm tired. I'm young. Like I'm hungry. And now I have to just go to bed. And so I go to bed and I remember like not sleeping at all. But then somehow I would fall asleep <laughs> and wake up and be like, it's crazy. And it, it became a tradition that I figured out early on that when Christmas would happen, obviously I couldn't like go and wake my mom up. I think I did that one year and she was like, absolutely do not do that ever again. I'm sleeping. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay. So then like I would just wake up and I would like sit and wait in front of the Christmas tree, in front of the presents, just like staring at them like, okay, I gotta wait for mom and dad, right? And they'd come out and uh-huh. they're like, great present time. And they're like, we got to have our coffee first. Oh so then, gosh. So then I got smart. And I started making the coffee myself. I would start making the coffee. The smell would wake them up. And then they'd come out like, here, here's your coffee. And I started learning exactly how they would take it. I'm like, mom, a little bit of sugar, creamer. Dad, sugar, creamer. Here you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone sit down. Present time. Like, I was just like, come on. Stop delaying this moment for me. Right. Um, so, yeah. One year, one year, Santa Claus. And this was the year that I was like, how, I, didn't, I didn't sleep. So how did this even happen? How did I, how did this happen? I went to sleep, I guess. I went to bed. I was up all night, tossing, turning, eyes wide, just waiting. So excited. Knots <laughs> in my stomach, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, it was daytime and there's something on my bed. And I'm like, what is happening? And I look and my stocking is laying on my bed and it's full of toys and treats. And I'm like, <gasps> and of course, wow. I just want to tear into it. I just want yeah. to tear into it. Yeah. But of course, I'm like, mom's going to be mad. <laughs> Because she wasn't here for this moment. <laughs> so I waited. And of course, my mom tells the story. She goes, yeah, I put it on our stocking so she'd have something to do in the morning so I could sleep in a little bit. And she didn't even open it. I was like, well, you, you ruined me, mom. You scared me. Oh, I'm just going to say, nowadays, our traditions are a little bit like um, we'll do like a, a gift exchange with my family. We'll do like mm-hmm. the, we'll hand out numbers oh. and we'll kind of like steal gifts or, you know what I mean? Swap them, yes. you know what I mean? Like we yeah. do that kind of thing. And we also do a gingerbread house decorating contest. <laughs> That's cute. That's really good. cute. Yeah, I loved it. Our, our traditions were a lot crazier. Um, when I was in New Mexico with, cause in, in New Mexico, we had all my family there, like everybody. Um, at one point it was my grandma, all my aunts, um, you know, and so it was kind of fun though, because Christmas got to last all day. Um, where now it kind of is kind of over <laughs> at the beginning. It's like, okay, we open, that's it. But, um, back in the day though, it was, um, we would first wake up in our own little, in our own in immediate family homes and we'd open Christmas gifts there. Then we would go to my first, my, my, um, my one aunt's house. Then we'd have lunch and open Christmas gifts there. Then, um, we would go to, and my grandma's house was like the, the highlight. That was like the pinnacle. That's where everyone got together. All the different houses got together. Even family friends would all come. I mean, it was so, and my grandma's house was not that big. I think it was only like maybe 1400 square feet, but we fit like everybody up in there and the gifts would fill her entire living room. And, um, and it was so much fun because, um, we always, we always charged the little ones to, to hand out gifts. So they would, you know, they took their job so seriously. Oh, Aunt Delphine. Oh, Aunt that, you know, they were just running around giving out gifts. And after that, then we would have the late night party at my other aunt's house. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and we would open gifts there. Um, so it was so much fun and I really, truly miss it. But, you know, as sometimes families go, when, when the staple kind of dies, it kind of like ends. So we all had to find uh, new traditions, but, but it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, we're trying to carry out some of the, uh, the ones that she did. Um, she was a awesome lady but yeah nice fun 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 but we also open the christmas eve gift too yeah Mm -hmm. do you ever open up the christmas eve gift and you're like dang it i should have picked something else my daughter did that last year she was so mad she was like like you've been spying one you've been spying a present under the tree and it's shaped weird and you're like Oh, that's the one. That's the one I'm going to pick out. I got this ready. (laughs) And you open it and it sucks. Yes. Or something. Yes. 
<laughs> that's exactly what happened to my daughter. Oh, she was like, okay, what is this? Oh, yeah, poor thing. And we do, okay, so my husband um, added onto our traditions too. This was something we, I never did, but because his family did it, we do it, um, which is, it's it's quite interesting. We don't decorate the tree until Christmas Eve. Oh, I was going to ask you that question. Yeah. Our, our now, tree only has see, lights. Yes. Yours is highly decorated. If you saw mine, it only has the lights. We don't put all the ornaments. We don't put all the fun other stuff onto it until Christmas Eve. My mother gets very excited about Christmas. She gets very excited about any holiday. But Christmas, <laughs> I think, is her favorite. Yes. And so she has a thousand decorations and they're all over the house. And before, and like, I'm a, I'm kind of a person that's like, all right, you can start putting up Christmas decorations on Thanksgiving and no yes. sooner because we're going back to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The mm-hmm. minute Santa comes down 34th Street, exactly. it is officially Christmas. Yes. He, it is a Christmas he season. is the one that launches Christmas. I agree. 100% and so agree. then I would like, I would put up, you know, some, some Christmas things, but I'd still have my Thanksgiving stuff, but I'd put up, start, I'd start putting up Christmas things. Uh-huh. Um, but mom this year, she just got way too excited. It was like the week before Thanksgiving, we had our tree up. No, I, I agree stuff. because I think this year has been so bummy because even, and my husband's actually more, more like he likes to wait till December, but he's allowed my tradition of like you starting on Christmas day, right after Santa launches it, then it's time we decorate, you know, while the food's getting ready or whatever. But, um, uh, this year we actually did go earlier because of this this crappy year, and you know we we wanted to kind of get a jump start to joy. We just Yay. wanted a jump start to joy. Jump start and, to joy. Yes, and we did, and it was awesome because we started uh, like about two weeks before Thanksgiving, and it just made the house happier and everything's happy. Um, so it, I I was happy that for this year at least that we started a little bit earlier. My fiance, forever, though. <laughs> um, my fiance does his family like I, the two traditions that stick out in my head of what they do is they do they do Christmas tags. So they will have like it'll look like there's a thousand gifts under the tree. But really, there's like a lot of kind of funny gifts or practical gifts. But every gift has a tag. And it's not just like from or to dad from Kirk or whatever. It's like to dad hope this year is a flowering one <sighs> kirk and it, it'll like he'll open it and it's like <gasps> seeds you know what i mean that's like, cute that's so they have like silly things that kind of imply what's in the wrapping yes and it, i think that's really cute and then the other thing that they do is they they make i think the day before christmas they make something called wife saver <gasps> but they make it the day before christmas because on Christmas Day, you just stick it in the oven and heat it up. But it's like eggs, bread, cheese. Mm. It kind of layered. It's very tasty, but it's supposed Delicious. to be like saves, saves the wife on Christmas Day from okay. having to make Christmas breakfast. Wife now, I don't know where my grandpa got this one food wise, but he would have a coconut and the coconut would last until the new year. I don't know why. I never knew why. Yeah. And on New Year's, he would break it and we would drink the juice and eat the coconut. I don't know why. And I think it goes back to maybe a black like thing. Would he get it it, on Christmas? I don't. I just remember it being there through the whole holiday. So I think it was maybe before Christmas, but he'd have the coconut and it was like a big deal to keep it in in view. And then and then whenever it was um, Christmas eve or the christmas day then you break it and i don't know what it was supposed to represent but i remember but he was the only one that did it so maybe and i never asked because i was you know very young so i was just like i don't know he was like okay <laughs> but that's and if he cool was, yeah if would, he was would a, your if, mom know what that was about maybe my mom maybe i'll ask her like we what call it her. was or maybe yeah like mom she'd be so mad it's so late but um, <laughs> She's like, why are you let's, in, me let's invite her on the call listen, right now listen mom i need you to tell me about papa what? Papa. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so he had a, a lot of interesting things um that I really do think are traditional things that just didn't carry out through the generations. Yeah. That's their fault for not explaining it. That's what I say. Well listen, that's that's why you like you still have some of your family members you should ask. And then like these little should, things that you remember, you should start doing them. 
I should. And and it's right. You're very right because that's one of my regrets is not being able to ask questions when they were here. And now, like growing up, I'm like, or like now as an, in adulthood, I'm like, oh, I wonder why this. Or I wonder what. The, but of course, like we learned last episode, they believe things that weren't true. So, but yeah. at least they. It's would funny. Validated. <laughs> Yes. It's a funny thing as like an adult to like think about like what would my relationship what like I wish I could have known these people that you know pa- these family members that passed when I was so young I wish I could have known them as adults. Yes. You know even just a little bit cuz I just feel like there there is that kind of bit that you take for granted when you're young and so when they're when you're an adult there's so many other questions you have about life yes. and the world and Yes. I agree. Getting to know them as people rather than just like the title, like getting mm-hmm. to know not just Graham, but who was Loretta, you know? Like, yes. Who was, Loretta. who was Loretta? I know Graham. Graham is Graham. Who was Loretta? I have a great grandma named Loretta. Aww, or great, Loretta's. great aunt, great aunt, great aunt. Loretta. My great grandma. Shout out to Loretta. Gertrude. Yes, Gertrude. Gertrude. <laughs> I love Gertie. <laughs> Gertie. I love it. Uh, oh, I have an update for you. Okay. The Christmas lights. Oh, <gasps> what happened with your Christmas Girl. lights? Uh oh. So we kind of touched on this last episode. My Christmas lights outside have been burning out. However, I have finally fixed it. I have replaced fuses, which I didn't know that you could do for Christmas lights, but I figured mm-hmm. it out. I've gotten other strands. I've plugged them into other outlets. I've figured it out. Everything is fantastic, right? Well, yesterday, there was this huge storm in Vegas where all of a sudden it just downpoured and it was windy and it was crazy. And I go outside and everything is out. Like there's a fuse that's burned. And I'm like, like an actual fuse. I'm like, how is everything out? Everything is out. Kirk's out there. He's cha- he's like flipping fuses. He can't figure it out. <laughs> and are you ready for this? What? Two hours later, they all just came back on. See? Mysteriously. It was Christmas magic. Christmas magic. And that's also why I, whenever we did put out lights, we're in an apartment right now, so I didn't fuss with that because I'm like, what, the porch? Ooh, whoopee. whoop de doo <laughs> No, um, but when we did have our house um, in our last uh, location, we did, and I will never go back, laser lights. You just put that thing up in there. You point it to the house. The whole house is like doing its little light show. And all you do is plug it in, plug it up. I've seen people this Bam. year do the laser lights but pointed at the tree. So like oh, the tree cool. in their front yard looks like there's lights in it. And you don't even have to decorate the tree. Yep. You don't have to. Man, the world is made easier for millennials. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Oh. I went driving around my neighborhood and it was so, it was like, it's so cute. Our, my neighborhood doesn't usually like go all out for Christmas. And I don't know if it's just because they've seen my lights, but <laughs> our neighborhood is insane this year. Insane with lights. It's all, it's all crazy. Everyone I mean, our, went overboard. I love it. That's awesome. And I, I actually should take the kids. I'll probably take the kids maybe. Um, well, Christmas Eve is very busy for us because we work at a church, so we're going to be like there the whole time, but maybe I'll go like on the 23rd or something and go to, to a couple neighborhoods, just drive through. That's what we love to do. There was an amazing, they kind of like fell off the map, but there was an amazing um, place in California. Uh, it was in Thousand Oaks. It was called, oh my gosh, Candy Cane Lane. Chris, my husband took me whenever we were dating one day and this whole neighborhood, it was like, you know, a fancy neighborhood. And it was one that apparently whenever you would move in, they were like very, very strict about, okay, if you're going to move into this neighborhood, you have to agree to do go all out on Christmas because it was the entire like city block. It wasn't just like one little neighbor. It was like the entire thing. And they went way all out. You'd go in, they they would have coffee. I mean, coffee and hot chocolate and funnel cakes what? that you could stop and get. Yes. And you could either walk or drive very slowly through every single street. And there was these crazy light things happening. It was so much fun. And then we went whenever Angelie was about five or so, and it wasn't as good. But then LA, um, somewhere in LA had a they popped up a new one in the neighborhood, and that one was really fun too. But yeah, like I love those, and I th- I feel like I wish 
I would be around a neighborhood like that. Even though, can I, I give you a controversial opinion? Yes, of course. I always feel like I want hot chocolate to be better. <laughs> Are you always disappointed? Well, yes. what are you making it with? Are you making it with just water? Okay, listen. So I used to, you know, do the instant stuff. And I'm like, I can't do instant anymore because it just never, it's like even with milk, with water, doesn't matter. It never comes out the way I just imagine it. Yeah. This, um, our friend Ray posted on his Facebook um, a recipe for hot chocolate. And so I tried it and it was good, but it was way too sweet. So then there's okay. a little bit of me that's like, son of a nutcracker, <laughs> too sweet, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I have had hot chocolate once and it was like Mexican hot chocolate. Yes. Like, those are so oh, good. Those are. I love the what spice. The spice. <sighs> the spice. And a little heat. Now I'm going to go get like, one. That's I'll be right what back. hot chocolate should be <laughs> always. Just that yes. should be always. I agree. I agree. It, the the Mexican auto, they know what they're doing. Man, that thing is good. That thing is good. Um, yes. Okay. Here's here's a few other. Here's something else I have a question for you about because okay. this, is, this is difficult for me. In terms of, and I'm not talking about this year because this year I have another, I have another list for this year. Mm -hmm. Talking about years past. Christmas movies. The ones I see, I like, I feel like I have to watch every year are obviously Muppet Christmas Carol, mm -hmm. The Grinch, mm -hmm. Elf. Of course. I love, like, throw in a Home Alone, Home Alone 2. Yes. Not three. Throw three Not out. Not three. Three. Get, throw it out. Throw um, it out. I don't even know what they were thinking. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's awful. Uh, a Christmas story. That's 24 hours anyway. Oh, yes. That's always good. That's got to be on. Yes. Um, and then like, oh, the Santa Claus. I catch, yes. I catch the Santa Claus every now and then. I, I, some, like, I don't always like, I come in and out of the Santa Claus sometimes. I, I can I like have Santa that Claus on in my life. Making. I need it because it was hope for a child who was always in an apartment who didn't have a chimney. And I was like, well, how yeah. is Santa going to get here? And I loved it because showing that Santa can make it a, a, a chimney out of anything. I was like, it's true. That's how. That was that's nice. how that was nice. And then the I like a miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Of I course. like if that's on, I like to see it. And this is the original, this is the original. or the the, the, the yes, of course. I like the. Original. I was like or the Mara Wilson. That yeah, one's cute, original. but the original's so cute. It's so oh. much better. Yeah, that that like Santa Claus and his little British accent just kill me. Um, <laughs> and his little singing the Dutch. When he was singing it, whenever she was sitting on his lap, and, and she and she's like, "I'm sorry, she only speaks Dutch." Sorry, she doesn't speak English. She's Dutch. And he was like, "He was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah." And they sing, they sing like a song about Santa Claus. Yes, That's Santa so Claus, Yes, I was like, I'm sure I'm probably saying it wrong. Santa Claus, Kapunchka. Kapunchka. Say but didn't mention Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa Claus. And then, and then this is not, this is technically not a Christmas movie, but I always like to see it around the Christmas holidays is mm -hmm. Meet Me in St. Louis. Yes. Well, she sings the Christmas song in it. I'm so happy. You, yes. So yes, it's be, it's the Judy Garland movie. Yes. She sings, have yourself a merry little Christmas. This That's is where, where this song from. came from. Yes. And it's such a sweet, do you, did you ever, you saw that movie? Obviously. Oh, I saw that movie a million times. I, love I used to love Judy. that movie. Tootie's the cutest child in the world. And then she even when so she was slamming in those 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 snowmen, I was still like, "You're so cute." Oh, it was so sad. <laughs> you're destroying things, but you're adorable. I was, and it was drunk very sad. last night, dear mother. Dear mother, I was drunk drunk last the night. night before. Before. <laughs> <laughs> I promised not to get drunk anymore. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Now, very cute. Now, if I were to give you, oh, an elf. Did I say elf? Obviously yes, elf. you did say elf. Okay. Obviously. And if you haven't seen the Netflix, um, the Christmas movies that made us, you have to see that. They only put two Ooh. movies on there, but elf is one of them. And you're going to love it even more after you see that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I were to give you three, let me give you four classic Christmas movies and rank okay. them. I'm okay. going to give you Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay. 
elf. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the Grinch. And I'm going to give you Christmas story. Christmas story number one. Uh, elf number two. Wait, Grinch and what else? <laughs> Muppet you Christmas said, Carol. Muppet Christmas Carol. And then what was the other one? Grinch. Oh, and that was only four? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then then the Grinch and then Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> oh, wait. No. You know what? You know how you do this? This is how you do this game. All right. Ready? This is how we're going to do ready. this game. Okay. Elf okay. or the Grinch? Elf or the Grinch? Elf. Elf. Yeah. Muppet Christmas Carol. Or Christmas Story? Christmas Story all the way, baby. Christmas Story or Elf? Christmas Story. Dang. All right. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool, 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 cool. Christmas Story, I didn't in- truly enjoy until I was an adult. But once I was an adult and I'm like, oh my gosh, this movie is the best ever. All right. How about this? <laughs> Home Alone 1 versus Home Alone 2. Two. All right. Mm-hmm. Santa Claus versus Me. Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, Miracle on 34th Street. Miracle on 34th Street or Home Alone 2? Miracle on 34th Street. That's just <laughs> classic. I mean, you can't just, I mean, no. That, that, can't, you can't compete. <laughs> you can't compete. Are you Natalie Wood? Are you, are you, do you have those big brown eyes and that cute little, no. Oh, that's right. That was Natalie. <laughs> it was Wood, Natalie, was it? Yes. <gasps> oh my heart. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Do you know what I missed? I missed. It's a wonderful life. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm like, I don't know why this is not on your list. <laughs> oh but can gosh. we, Jimmy Stewart? Hello, Jimmy Stewart, baby, dude. You Clarence. can't live life without Jimmy Stewart. Oh my god. So that and that changes the game. Yes. He's Jimmy Shoot. Stewart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so. <sighs> oh my gosh. Elf. Okay. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. <laughs> Miracle on 34th Street. We're all it's a wonderful to life. It. It's a wonderful life. Yes. It's a that wonderful is life, the man. ultimate. It's the ultimate. It is the man. ultimate because, you know, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wing. <laughs> I just love, like, I can't, I can't watch that movie and not cry at the ending. Yeah, how Every can time. you not? Unless you don't have a heart and a soul. Oh my goodness! And it doesn't and matter. Think, and to think, dude was a is Drew Barrymore's grandpa, right? No, you're thinking of um, Lionel Barrymore. Oh, not, wasn't he? Not, his... not Jimmy Stewart. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Lionel Barrymore is uh, Drew Barrymore's grandpa or great grandpa, great uncle. One of those. But is he in it? Yes, he's the old dude. He's the dude. He's the mean guy. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh snap! It's such he, a good movie. It is such, oh, a, good it's such a good movie. When he's so, like, he's like, "What do you want? I'll give you the moon. I'll put a lasso around that moon." Like it's just, it's just so sh- you know what. And it doesn't matter how kind of over the top or dated it it can be. Sometimes there's just like true, honest moments of like yes. actual real good things. And then it also kind of points to the fact that sometimes around the holidays, things get really terrible. It gets tough. It, it gets can tough. be really tough. And it's it like, very true. Like right now, like there's, yeah. there's gotta be an, it's a wonderful life scenario right now. Oh yeah. Going through this pandemic of like people by themselves, people alone, people really mm-hmm. sad, people feeling not so much holidays, pressure. Yeah. But somehow feeling connected again to like the people around them because the people around them love them. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and gosh. and this is a movie that shows it's not about gifts. It's not even about Santa. It's not about anything. It's about family and, and love. Love. And, and that's love. it. And that's it. And yes, like, I and showing up for people when they need you. Yes. That's the ultimate true. one. Because he was I always agree. showing up for everybody. Yes. And he didn't say anybody. And then they all showed up for him. And they all showed up for him. And that was so sweet. Oh, my gosh. So speaking of some things, some fun traditions maybe that we can consider if we haven't done them, I was looking up some other people's traditions because I was like, okay, what do other people do? Um, And there's – so on Momtastic. Dot momtastic com. Com. momtastic um they have there's there was this tradition written on their list and it's and it was okay get this this is totally a theater major thing to do so i'm kind of tempted okay all right it says go gift shopping 
while dressed as elves, but act like there's nothing particular going on. See the madness that ensues all around you. Oh, I love that one. I think I need to do this. I think I need to, I mean, like, not just, not like just this. I mean, full on elf and believe it 100% and just go on your merry way shopping. (laughs) You know what I would do? 100%. So, you know, the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch, right? Yes. Christine Baranski plays uh, Martha May Houvier. Yes. And I feel like that's my energy at Christmas time. I feel like I'm big Martha May Houvier energy. I feel like I would like 100% do like one of those extravagant updos and like a weird, a frilly outfit and go out and be like, I need more tinsel. Grab me more marshmallows for my hot chocolate. Like I would just absolutely crush. I can see you doing that. I can Thank see you. you doing that. Yes. Mm-hmm. I if I was in the Grinch, I would definitely not be that. I would might be. I, I'd be the. Is there? I think there's a the wacky teenagers that go up and mess with the Grinch. That that's who I would be. That's your energy in that movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just just Tom Foolery. <laughs> who is Tom? And was he really doing foolery? But what's yes, he doing? <laughs> Tom Foolery and just messing around. I, that's what would be my energy for sure. Um, and then good. so there was another one. That I actually liked too. And this was from parenting.com. Ooh. Yes, because I am a mom. So momtastic in parenting. But yes. um, this one, I, it, it actually reminded me of something we did do. Not always every just Christmas. We did it like all the time. We did it like every time our family got together. And this is um, put on old 45 records on the stereo and dance around the kitchen table doing the funky chicken um and this was um this was a quote from a a lady named Manette Herbert Geisler but anyway um yes but what I mean we didn't do this exact same thing but we always had dance outs in our family meaning like after we ate after we have nothing else to do you know after everybody's done with the actual celebration and but no one wants to leave my aunt usually my um, aunt Diane would put on some music And it didn't matter what, sometimes it was like today's music or that day's music, or sometimes it was like old school music from the seventies or whatever, but we would put on music and we would just dance. The entire room would just go, we're like, "Mm, mm, mm." we're just just having our own little dance party, no matter what music it was. And it was so much fun. And I even have footage of when Angelie, my oldest was like, uh, like three. And of course she didn't know how to dance. So all she could do was like the so she was just bouncing Aww. in the middle of it and the she got she did one of those like break through the middle and just was yeah like bouncing <laughs> we were like go on baby <laughs> oh my goodness that's and so I miss, cute i miss that so much because it was so much fun i i love it i, I love, love it. that tradition yeah my um mom obviously she we married we married into a big italian family when i was a teenager mm-hmm. and um that with the awesomest step brothers ever, by the with way, the I miss you guys. Step brothers ever, ever. Yes, ever. they were mm-hmm. awesome. Um, <laughs> but we we would do uh, Christmas Eve would be the feast of the seven fishes, which is you would do not like you have no meat on Christmas Eve. It's all fish dishes, Italian fish dishes, and so there'd be like fried calamari. There'd be stuffed shells. There'd be you know, white sauce and clams, there'd be red sauce and shrimp and mussels, there'd be fish, like anything you could think of, there'd be a thousand things because everyone oh would gosh. bring something. And there's like yeah. 30 people when my family get together. And it's unfortunate because yes. we're not going to be able to do that this year. But yes. obviously, like it's, it's, it was still something so fun mm-hmm. that we would just get together and be, and be so stuffed. <laughs> oh, so stuffed. I remember we did very similar. Um, my, my, so I, of course, you know, have a black family. And then our God family, my, my grandma's best friend, and they were best friends for half their life or like a big chunk of their life um, was, I mean, like white, white, like white, like literally they called themselves, you know, Hicks because they were literally from the sticks. Like they were in the mountains. Hicks from the sticks. They were Hicks from the sticks. They ate our bunny. We'll talk about that. 
But anyway, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we had a bunny and we told them to watch it. My, my godmother and her husband to watch it while we were in Vegas. We were just visiting Vegas at the time. And then we came back and to pick up Honey Bunny. And, and we said, Marie, where's where's our bunny? And she yelled at she yelled to her husband. She's like, hey, Ed, which rabbit did we have for the rabbit stew? No, no. <laughs> But anyway, no. but anyway, are you kidding me? No, they oh ate our bunny. <laughs> but anyway, so I have um, so many feelings about that that I can't even unpack <laughs> right now. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> but one day, um, um, you know, we're getting all together for Christmas, and they always come down from the sticks. And uh, um, and my grandmother tells Marie, she's like, okay, you know, you you can be in charge of the desserts. And she's like, oh, yes, you know, and they were so funny. They Their chemistry was hilarious. My grandma was very sarcastic and very kind of like, you know, uh, you know, straightforward. And, and Marie was kind of like aloof in the world. But anyway, so she's like, okay, Marie, so you're going to bring the cheesecake. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marie comes in, wheels in 12 cheesecakes, like tiered. And my grandma was like, like, like angry in a way she was just like marie and was like i got overwhelmed i got so excited and did it you know she was all talking about all these cakes that she made she's like i made this one and i made this one and this one's a, a this cake and she described every cheesecake that she made to a tea and my grandma's just sitting there going who is going to eat all that <laughs> <laughs> and we had cheesecake forever oh my gosh but it was so funny it was so funny. And, and, you know, and that's what I also learned that we eat different things, you know, black culture and white culture. Like, I didn't know what, like, string bean casserole. Oh, my family didn't do that. I was like, what the my heck is that? My family didn't do that. My mom, my mom was like, yeah, she's like, yeah, I had it growing up, but it was terrible. I'm not bringing that into the new, into the <laughs> new family. Hell no. And I remember asking her, I'm like, mom, have you heard about this? Like people put like French onions on top. She goes, yeah. No, no. It's disgusting. <laughs> I never heard of it. I never, until I was an adult, I was like, and I got invited somewhere and I was like, where, what is this? I'm like, where's the collard greens? Oh, I got Listen, no collard greens. I'm, granted, like I, I represent, I represent a small portion of them because I know that there are, there are some people out there that have good taste, but. There are some white, white people out there that <laughs> white that um, <laughs> that just don't that just they're holding on to something just to hold on to it. And they got to let it go. They you know what I mean? Got to got to let it. Well, I mean, the same, thing, die. same thing. You know, I mean, I mean, there's I a reason why we don't eat eating. mutton and stuff anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just saying there's I was dating I was dating a white boy um, and he was from a small town in Northern California. And he came to um, New Mexico one day to visit my family with me. And my grandma was trying to stuff him. And he was big. He was like a football player. He was like six, two. And you know me, I'm only five, two. So he was like towering over me. And, um, and my grandma was like, Oh, I got to feed him. <laughs> you know, she's like, I got to, this boy's big. I got to feed him. So she was like, baby, you want some oxtail? He was like, yes. What? She's like, yes. Some oxtail? Ham hocks. <laughs> Oh, and she made him, he's like, well, he's like, I got to try this. So he ate oxtail and she was going to make him, I was like, mom, I was like, grandma, don't make him, don't make him chitlins. Let's leave chitlins. <laughs> I, now, now my husband loves chitlins, you know, my, my cousin loves chitlins, but I, I, I've never been on the chitlin train. Do you know what a chitlin is? It's, it's, it's fried skin. Mm -mm. No, what is Worse. it? Worse. Pig intestines. Oh, right. I was like, I, clean I, them out. I couldn't remember if it was pig skin or pig intestines, but yeah. Yeah, it's pig intestines. And then you can eat, you can even eat the pig snout. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can eat oh, anything yeah. on the pig. You can eat anything. It's pig true. Pig Um, We would just make fudge. Like, we don't really have like a food food thing. Like, we have, um, we'll make like treats. Like, we do treats. You know what I mean? Like, so we'll make, we'll make. This year, we're attempting to make our own gingerbread cookies. Oh, fancy. We usually make just Christmas cookies, like roll out the Pillsbury dough and, and cut out some Christmas cookies with it. Mm -hmm. But um, this year, we're actually going to try our own gingerbread. Okay. Um, we always make like Kahlua cake. Um, mm -hmm. And mom will usually make her chocolate bun cake, which is really good. And it's grandma's fudge. So now, grandma's that, grandma, fudge. now that grandma's gone, mom and I have to make the fudge, but it's never as good. I know. And that's good. another thing I regret. I, I regret never getting her recipes 
because Graham could whip up anything, so many things. And I never got recipes. I never sat with her and really cooked. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing. I regret. Of course, I thought we I have had her more recipes. Time. We just it does never taste the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always think you have more time. Always. Th- I always thought I had more time with her. Um, and I did not. Get the recipes. Not. Get the recipes. Get the recipes. Get the stories. Spend time. The stories. Spend time. Spend time with them while you can. <gasps> so speaking of movies, getting back to the movie train. Oh, the movie train. Choo, choo. The movie train. There have been some new um, Christmas editions in the movie train this year. Okay. Um, now, oh, I, I haven't. Have- I haven't watched any of the new stuff yet because I I'm trying to get through like the old stuff. But by the yeah. time this podcast airs, I will have watched some of the new stuff because I'm almost done with my classic Christmas mm-hmm. things. But obviously, like they had Christmas Chronicles last year on Netflix, which was a uh-huh. huge hit. I don't know if you watched it. I have not seen it yet, but it I'm really planning to. I am planning it to. It was really year. good last year. Um, and then they have Christmas Chronicles too, which again yes. I haven't seen yet. Noel. I, I heard that was Disney amazing. Plus. Yes. I haven't seen I that it. yet. I haven't seen it But yet, I think though. that came out last year or something too, but I just never got around to it. Um, Godmothered, which technically isn't a Christmas movie, but it happens at Christmas time. You know what? Okay, those movies... Okay, listen. My husband still tries to... Like, he's he's he is truly believing that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And uh, I... He's like, oh, sitting around Christmas. There's a tree. I'm like, babe, listen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what I guess you... if me, 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 me and St. Louis can kind of be a Christmas movie. Die Hard but... can be a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I guess. But it can be. I guess. I'm not going to guess... take away someone's joy. If that joy makes them Die feel Hard. like Christmas, you have it. Um, <laughs> But big My news, Christmas is die hard. Jingle Jangle. Yes, I heard Jingle Jangle was amazing too. The I've first not seen it. Black Christmas movie again. They, I mean, well, you know, and this is why I'm so excited about the Oscars being diversified too. That whole rule that they did, you know, that rule that they they placed earlier in the year uh, yeah. that everything has to be diverse for now, or you're never you're not going to be nominated. And I love it because all of a sudden, everything is diverse. All of a sudden, like I've seen movies and things now that I'm like, there's all these black actors. Look at all these black women. Oh, look at it. But it's, you know, look what? At all it's these, one of those And not only black, but look at all these women. Look yeah. All these women. All these women. Look at all that. Mm-hmm. It's great. It is great. Um, but I, I wrote down the, I wrote down the little synopsis, which is an imaginary world comes to life in a holiday tale of an eccentric toy maker, his adventurous granddaughter, and a magical invention that has the power to change their lives forever. Very exciting. I haven't watched yet. I'm very excited. Everyone, I remember everyone being like, Jingle Jangle a couple weeks ago. So I'm like, I'm getting there, guys. Jingle Jangle. You know what I just watched? Um, I watched a documentary because I didn't even know she did this. I knew she was a dance teacher. But I didn't know she did this. Um, Debbie Allen. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know that she did this uh, hot chocolate nutcracker. It's a it's a Ooh. it's a Netflix um, documentary about it, too. And apparently she does this every I fell in love with. I mean, I already liked her, um, but I fell in love with her after this, too, because she does this thing because as you, she's a dance teacher. And so she brings these underage. I mean, not under underprivileged kids. Um to this day, any, any child who wants to dance, they yeah. don't have to pay for it. Nice. She figured out, she figures out a way to get them in. And, um, and it's so sweet, but in this, in this nutcracker hot chocolate, um, she decided, um, to make the nutcracker more just fun. And so she brings, she has them, she has Kara travel to Bollywood, I mean, to India, to do Bollywood dances. She she goes to China. She goes to a rainforest. She goes to, um, like, all these different cultural places, too. And she brings in, you know, theater. It's not, it's not just dancing. They're acting, too, and they sing. And it's just nice. so cute. And she just packs it with as many people as she can. Um, but what's awesome is that she uses that. She uses this nutcracker as a fundraiser. And in the documentary, they say that it can get up to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
wow. what she makes off of it. That's um, awesome. and, and because she does it multiple, not many, many, many nights, but, um, but I just think it's so amazing because these kids get an opportunity. It's just Christmas joy. And she did something new and fun for a good cause. And I thought like, it was That's amazing. Cool. Hot chocolate. chocolate. Baby. And, oh, and you know what I want to see? I'm going to give him a shout out and I am going to tag him somehow. I need to see Mr. Robert Connors. Black Nativity. Black Nativity. Yes. I need to see this because I hear about it on his social media every uh -huh. single year. I see pictures, but I haven't seen it yet. And so I need him to get on the Hello. streaming train. Oh. I need him to do something to where, like, yeah, we I'll I need to see. I'll give you, I'll give sure. you money. Give me the link. Let me see it. <laughs> I, I, give, give me, me the, the link, link, man. I need to see it and I need to celebrate Agreed. with you. Um and then, oh, so, and then the last one I have on here, which was oh, yes. the, the other yes, new yes, one yes. is Happiest Season, which um, is a holiday romantic comedy that mm -hmm. captures the range of emotions tied to wanting your friends, or wanting your family's acceptance, being true to yourself and trying not to ruin Christmas, That's which cute. it's a, you know what it's I a forgot? lesbian um, Christmas movie. And I think, oh, awesome. I think it, I haven't, again, I haven't watched it, but from what I surmise is that someone is not out to their family and they bring their girlfriend home for Christmas, mm -hmm. but they're not. Uh -huh, and they're, uh -huh, they're like uh -huh, coming out at the same time. And then it has that moment. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I saw the preview yeah. for that. And there's a lot, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of heavy hitters in there and, 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 and same thing in Jingle Jangle. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of heavy hitters in terms of like acting greats. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm excited yes. to see you know both I, of them this year for that reason, because there's going to be some great performances. For sure. For sure. You know what? One movie I forgot to place on the list of ones that we watch yeah. every year is Polar Express. Oh, Polar Express. Oh, Polar Express. You know, okay. Yes. We, we, we are a big Polar Express family. Um, every year. My, my mom watches that at least a couple times a year. Actually, Polar She just Express. loves it. What are your thoughts? I feel like the CGI has not aged well. Well, of course not. But it, uh, it, you know, I think they tried something and I commend them for trying. True. And I do like that they, they, if they didn't couple it with a good story, it would be trash. <laughs> but because they coupled it with such that little boy from across the tracks on the other side of the tracks breaks my heart every single time I watch it. I want to adopt him. I know he has a family, but I need You know him. those stop motion movies like the Rudolph and and um Santa Claus is coming Nightmare Before Christmas. No. <laughs> well, yes, but the um Rudolph and um Santa Claus is oh, coming oh, the, old the old ones. ones. Yes, yes, there yes. There was one yes, called yes. Nestor, the Christmas Donkey. Did you ever watch that one? Did you ever watch that one? Nestor. It was a it was a it was Nestor. a little movie and he was Nestor and he had really long ears and everyone made fun of his, all the other donkeys made fun of his long ears and he kept tripping over them and he would, it was, it was so heartbreaking. The whole movie is just making you want to stab yourself in the eye because it breaks your heart so much and he gets like sold and he gets separated from his mom. Like it's so oh my gosh. upsetting. And then it turns out that he's the donkey that like Mary and Joseph pick to like go to Bethlehem on See? and like there's a big sandstorm and he shields Mary with his giant ears <laughs> okay and okay so real quick before we start wrapping up I have a question for you did you did you do your homework okay. that I sent you today um, no you didn't you I forgot <laughs> I was going to listen to, okay, can I tell you, I had a crazy, I had to go to the post office and the line was astronomical. And, and then when I got home and I had a crazy time after the post office and when I got home, I just wanted to like not, and then I forgot because then I got with kids and then I was working on thumbnails. <laughs> For those of you wondering what's going on, I sent Selena Leslie Odom Jr.'s Christmas album. And I was like, you need to listen to this before we shoot this podcast tonight because I know you're going to have some thoughts about it and you didn't do it. And I'm, and by thoughts, I mean, it's fantastic. Um, well, I already knew it was going to be fantastic. fantastic but he, he like, I mean, it's so rare to actually make a new Christmas song. You know what I mean? Because 
Because you make a new Christmas song and usually it's terrible. The only people that have succeeded in making new Christmas songs are in sync. 98 Degrees made a, a Christmas song, like one Christmas song that worked. You know what I mean? One that worked. Um, there, Faith Hill sang the one from The Grinch, the Where Are You Christmas? And that was great. The Christmas Shoes. Christmas Shoes was good. Hey. Oh, no, that's not a new one. I was going to say Mary J. Blige. Oh, she's saying um, a few of my favorite things, which technically isn't a Christmas song, but she made it very Christmassy in the background, and it was super good. Um, but I think Leslie Odom Jr. just made a new Christmas song, Snow. Okay, so I am going to listen to you. You better. And, um, and then I am. I am because I, I really do. I love him. I mean. Hamilton. Um, so I, I was actually really excited to listen to it. And then my day happened. So I will, I promise. I'm so sorry. I let you down. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so as we wrap things up for Christmas. And we would like to hear some of your Christmas traditions. If you, you heard some, if you, you know, didn't hear something that you do or you do something unique, I would love to hear about it. Just let it, I, let us know. I'm very curious about other people's traditions. Let us know your Christmas traditions. Talk back, people. Merry, Merry Christmas to all of you that celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Um, we hope that wherever you are, you have a wonderful holiday. And if you are separated from your family right now, then stay strong. You'll see them soon. We love you. And, and just wear your Christmas pajamas. We do love you. And watch It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. Watch it. And all the ones that make your heart go boom. Merry Christmas, everybody. We love you. And we will talk at you next time. See you next week, everybody. Bye. <laughs> see you next week.